right, so Laura, you've been in the game for so many years now. I mean, for me, you're a true, to me, being on radio, it's about a voice that we listen to and we recognize automatically, right? Because they don't see us on radio. It's right. a specific voice <laughs> that we hear. Right, 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 right. It is, you've been, you know, you've been a force in the industry. And, you know, for girls like me growing up, I'm a woman now, but, you know, when I started listening to you, it was girls like me. That is just so inspiring to see and you being a Latina and, and I want to know where the love of broadcasting and speaking to people and where did that come from growing up? To be honest with you, it, it, it came from, it came from me wanting to be um, a functioning piece of hip hop culture, but I couldn't DJ and I couldn't rap and I couldn't break dance, <laughs> I couldn't do any of it. So I, I was always like searching for like, you know, purpose and love and, and, and what is it about the subculture that's so welcoming um, specifically for all these people from all walks of life you know immigrant people it breaks down language barriers yes. like no matter what you know your race religion it seems to be a hub where everybody kind of like joined together you know what I mean and um, you know as as pioneers that came before us broke down barriers and the world fell in love with hip-hop you know there were the the DJs who became disc jockeys and all of a sudden hip hop was a genre, you know what I mean? That people were taking seriously as a business. And I just looked up to people like, you know, of course, Angie Martinez, like Nautica Dela Cruz, like Carmelita from Sway and Tech, like all these amazing women yes. that were working and having an amazing time in like a male dominated space, but still were able to like have a voice. And you know, I, I think the biggest success to my career is being able to just be yourself. Like everyone tells me, it's like, oh, you're my friend in my head. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and it's really what it's about. Like probably when I started radio, I was 20 years old interning, you know? My first big break, like at a real radio station was when I was 24. So I started really, like I was pretty young to have like, you know, all of it. Yeah. I busted my ass for many years before that, you know? Uh, trying to trying to get there but and then I have when I tell you it's been the blessing of my life to be able to keep a radio show throughout my entire career uh, and, and it's been fun and it's taken me to most amazing places and opportunities and I've created other opportunities from it but that's really where it comes from you know it's like I'm so blessed to be able to do something that I love for a living, you know? Like sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I can't believe this is my job, you know? And it's been effortlessly because truly, you just like you said, you have been in the game so consistently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your voice has always been there, you know? Yeah, and but it's also, important, it's also important for people to understand that it is a business. And I think what separates me from a lot of people who, you know, I work with so much talent and I've seen people come and go, you know, people who disappeared, people who couldn't hang, people who are still, you know, you know, people that have came up with me that are still working. We always kind of give each other a salute you know what I mean? <laughs> because, you know, it's the business of entertainment and it's, and it's finicky yep. and it's faulty and it's not always a beautiful, you know, experience. And I've had really bad experiences too. But I always take them as like learning lessons, right? But I think the key thing for any, and it's for anybody who wants to pursue like a, a passion, um, understand the business of it. Understand that it is like the business of music is, you know, there's politics, there's rules, there's ways to go about things. Like, you know, like with me, I made it my duty to understand how ratings work. You know, what's going to keep my show up and running how, how now that i have this job how am i going to keep it you know what i mean it's right. like I, I maintain my relationships with sales because at the end of the day like i said i keep telling everyone it is a business people tell me all the time is like i want to do what you do and i'm like okay so what do you think i do that like, you hang out with rappers i'm like oh that's like the bare minimum you know? so for real the bare minimum of what i do you know I, I i um i started behind the scenes before i actually became uh, a talent you know, so I know how to produce. I know how to run my own show. I know how, you know, how to create a morning show. Like how to break down a clock. Like I know how to do all of that. So because I've been on the outside, you know, coaching and perfecting so many other people's successful shows, and I learned so much what to do and what not to do. That's what helped me stay focused and and, and keep a job. 
and again, seeing it as a job and seeing it as exactly what you said, it's a business. Yeah. So when you have the, when you have a love for something, you learn it. Like I was saying in the beginning, I couldn't just go off of the top of my head, having a conversation with somebody that has perfected the business like you. So slap to your face. It's like, all right, you didn't study this. You didn't, you know, you didn't take your time to get to know the person. Yeah. So People it's something that, that you truly have to learn. You just be like, okay, you know, today I'm going to call myself a radio personality. Well, there's, <laughs> there's so much that goes, you know, that comes with it, you know? And a lot of us who've been in the game for a long time, like, get it. You know, most girls that I know have traveled, have to move from city to city. Like, what people forget sometimes is that <laughs> radio stations have very few slots. Nope. You know, there's one That's morning right. show, on right. one midday, one afternoon, one night, one overnight, and the whole world wants your position, you know? So, and you hold on to it and hopes you keep it for as long as you can and you're successful or as long as you're happy. And then, um, and then you move, move on. And then there's only a certain amount of radio stations and then only a certain amount of hip hop radio stations, you know? Or whatever your genre is, or, or so is it, real. you know, uh, Spanish speaking state, whatever it is that you love to do. It's very slim. So a lot of people have, have sacrificed their family and their friends to travel to different states to, um, you know, get their feet wet and polish, you know what I mean, themselves until in hopes to come home and be able to do it at home. I was going to ask you too, that's on my list about moving from Cali. I mean, yeah, moving from Cali to New York. How was that transition? Uh, listen, I took a leap of faith when I was really, really young. I was just one of those really free spirited teenagers who wanted something new and I just literally left my house when I was like 19 years old and was like I'm just gonna move I remember I moved to Miami and I I moved to wow. Miami for I want to say like two th like three weeks and I was like uh -uh, this isn't for me <laughs> like I you know it was there was a lot of amazing things about Miami but I figured it's a place where I wanted to visit I just didn't want to live there you know yeah. and then I and then I came to New York and then um and I was like yeah I could do this you know because I'm from you know, Los Angeles, but I think people sometimes forget. It's like California is so complex and there's so many different areas. And I was raised in mid city Hollywood area where it's just like, it's a, it's a metropolitan city, you know? Yeah. So the hustle and, and everything else wasn't foreign to me. And I literally came here with nothing. I don't have no family here. I still have no family here. Wow. And I enrolled in school and I got jobs and I saved some money and I worked off student loans to pay my rent to feed myself. So I know what it is to be like, all right, well, I have $10 for the week. You know what I mean? I have to live off spaghetti for the next two days, three days, whatever, you know? But I will say I'm blessed to have a, a lot of uh, amazing friends. I have friends that I still um, have today that were very close that I met when I just got here. Wow. You know, so, so I think that's really important. Relationships are such a key element to people's success for your mental health, for your, yes. you know I mean? and, and for your just longevity in your business. And that's been a blessing of mine because in my field, when I was going to school, I was, I was a communications major, but I got my break before I graduated. Wow. So I never really finished school. I kind of was like, all right, I'm in class. And I, I was taking classes on broadcasting journalism. Meanwhile, I have a, top rated show, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it just became like, all right, you know, this isn't for me. I was like, I'm gonna take a, a pause and I'm gonna do my show. Cause I, you know, they were asking me to go here, do this, do that. So I was missing all these classes and I felt like I was living like a double life, you know? So I was wow. like, okay, I'll be back. I, and I, I never came back, but you know, radio is a, a very much a hands-on approach too. You know, it's kind of like who you know and what you know kind of like learning a trade you know that's why I always tell people if this is what you want to do learn how to edit learn how how to mix learn how to do as much as you can because that was key to my success too that I, I was already skilled in so many things that you know I always tell people put yourself in my position I was like if you're the boss right and you want somebody who knows how to do 20 things and then there's somebody who only has one thing who are you gonna hire especially so, in a hungry in a game like this, this is Hunger Games, girl. This is not. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's about, being, it's about being smart. And part of, part of you know, you being um, successful is how equipped are you? You know what I mean? How equipped mm -hmm. are you to succeed? Like, and, and, I, and I apply that with everything. Like, you should always make sure that, you know, you're very educated in whatever it is that you're jumping into. Totally. Okay, as a Latina now, because I love your accent. I was like, 
where was she from? That's the way I, that's how I found out you were from New York. And I mean, again, you said you had no family here, but girl, you have the whole, anybody that's listening to you is family. So the, you have to know the whole New York city on your back. You know what I'm saying? So you have family out here. <laughs> But yeah, I, 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 it's my home now. Like when I think about it, like every, like I go back to LA a lot. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I, I for work for my family, but I don't ever see myself moving back. Like this is my home. You know, this I've been here for over twenty years. Like I've been here for a long time. You know, so it's yeah. like it is what it is. So as a Latina, how was it coming into the game? And was it something that was a plus for you? Because I'm a um as you know I'm a teacher, so mm -hmm. I teach. I teach our immigrants. That's yeah. my main, that's my master's degree. It's in language and TESOL. Right, right, right. And when they come into the country, it's, it's people, it's stories like your stories that motivate them and tell them that this is why you guys come to the USA. You know, they see it as the country of dreams, you know? So when they come here and they hear stories like you, how was that for you? How was that? I mean, I was, I was born in Los Angeles, but my parents came from Guatemala, right? So wow. they have a traditional, like the stories that you hear all the time of people coming to the U.S. for in search for a better life, you know? And um, so like working hard was always instilled in me and also because I saw my parents do it at a very young age, you know, they sacrificed a lot. And, you know, we had to bear a lot of those sacrifices. But to me, it was more, um, I, I think I had to deal more with misogyny than, than me actually being a, a Latina. It was actually more of a plus because people Amazing. could relate to me, you know, and being That's bilingual right. given me also a lot of uh, work opportunities, you know. So I had a show that was bilingual. I have I've, I've done multiple commercials and like voiceover um, gigs that have paid me very well, you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and I got it because I'm bilingual, you know, they didn't have to get two people. They could just use me to do both, you know. But but it was I think it was more me being a female was that was a little tougher. And it was a different time, you know what I mean? So you really have to prove yourself. That's why I keep stressing the point of education, you know? Yep. It, like, I just wasn't there to just, you know, be a fly on the wall. I was there to be a functioning piece of the puzzle. And because I knew my shit, nobody could really dismiss me, you know? And because I knew what I was talking about. And I always tell um, the younger generation coming up, I was like, you guys are so technologically savvy and, and, and so ahead of the game that what helped me is like, I remember MySpace pages popping up and I was helping all these DJs how to like code them, you know? Yeah, oh my and God, I, you remember those coding? Yeah, oh. and then it's like, but for some reason we got them like this, you know? All of us knew how to code all of a yep. sudden. And we just got it. And, and, and that's, that's why I tell people all the time, like, I was like, use, you know, your skills to see how you can help somebody. And in return, they'll help you. And that's what really helped me succeed, you know? I was like, people wanted me around because I was useful. I wasn't just somebody that was tagging along. They were like, no, Laura can do this. Laura can run the boards while I'm doing this. Laura can hold me down. Laura can edit this program. Uh, Laura can create my social media profile. You know what I mean? <laughs> Laura can hook up my YouTube page. Like, so, so, so that's key, you know? And now that we're in a place where like social media is everything, but people say all the time, joking around, eh, radio, radio is, is fading. Radio is going nowhere. Like, nowhere. radio is going nowhere. But you also got to keep up with the times, right? Like, That's right. Our, our show streams and, and our streaming numbers are very high. We also have, we put out tons of social media content that does very well, you know, for um, being a, a local radio station. We have the most, you know, like YouTube subscribers of a local radio station, you know? Yes. And that's what people don't understand. It's like, for being a small, like our company at Hot 97, we're like a little bodega compared to everybody else. <laughs> I like, love that. Uh, um, stations, and I used to work at Power 105. That's where I started interning, you know? They're owned by Clear Channel, which is a huge monster. You know, they're like the Walmart, you know? They have all this, money and all this money. And you learn how <laughs> the difference is, is that how you have to work with the little tools you have. So I've worked with both. I've worked with huge companies and I've worked with small companies. So you, it, it, it's all a learning process. But, but, but to me, it was just like, that's what, you know, that what, kept, what has kept me in the game is always being, make, making sure I'm on top of it. You know what I mean? Making sure I know what's, what's next. And that's why I always advise uh, the younger generation, like educate yourself, bring something to the table. Yep. You totally. know, like, people tell me, I want to intern for you. I was like, okay, well, what can you do? Mm -hmm. I don't mean to sound like a bitch, but sometimes like, what can you do to help? <laughs> That's me? right. 
Like, and for and somebody who's been so down. long in the yeah. game, you know, you you're also looking for people, or you also you also would want somebody that's gonna help you come to that next level because we learn from each other. Learn from you. Know? Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. Like my old assistant, she was amazing. She was just like everything that I hated doing. She was so good at it and so <laughs> I just didn't have to babysit her. I knew that I could send her X, Y, Z emails and she'll knock it out for me and be like, here you go. You know? And it's like, and because, and because of that, I made sure that she was good. Now she's, you know, an exec at Apple that makes me so proud. You know what I mean? It's like, so I fire. Teach, and, and vice versa, by the way, I've had interns too that have given me opportunities. Like all of a sudden, like, I think one of my proudest moments is like, I get a call from like Ford Motors that they wanted to honor me. And I was like, how did you guys find me? And they were like, oh, well, Francisco is the one who, and I'm like, Francisco. And then I started looking him up. I was like, oh my God. I was like, Francisco was my intern. <laughs> wow. Like, seven years ago. And then he sent me this beautiful message saying, I never forgot everything you did for me. And when I started working for this company, I thought this was an opportunity that I wanted to share. And it was such a, a beautiful, like, you know, grounding moment for me, you know, Seriously. And I see it all the time. So I also, I am a, I'm a firm believer. It's like people always remember how you make them feel, you know? Yep. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. so you spoke about women and I wanted to go, it flows perfectly and in going into the envision and what mm -hmm. you're doing right now with envision and envision fest. And I mean, to me, somebody who works with the community, who works with, you know, my little girl, my girls are my everything. You know, I don't want to say yeah. little girls because now yeah. I'm in high school and they're like, they're grown women, you know? Right, 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 right. And to see this festival come together, to see, it's almost like a playground yeah. for, you know what I'm saying? For, for girls to be creative, to, to innovate, to just, oh, please, 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 ex like, tell us how this even came about. Because this was something oh, that I'm so inspired by. So Envision Fest um, was created by my partner, Sharifa, Sharifa Murdoch. And Sharifa and I have been really close friends since we started our careers, right? She went into fashion and I, I went into music and we've always kept in touch. And this is like my good girlfriend. And as we got older, we would always end up in the same events. Like I'm speaking at a panel or she's speaking at a panel or she's, you know, throwing an event here, you know? And, you know, I remember one day us talking about how there's, we're all, we were always the token woman on the panel or the token woman on, on the conversation. And I'm just like, bro, this sucks. Like we need to have something that's more for young girls, like, you know, it, but something with, with substance, you know? So Sharifa called me one day and she's like, I got it. She's like, I'm going to create Envision Fest. And she's in the trade, the fashion trade show business. And, and she's like, and I want your help. And we sat down and we, we put our dreams out of what we wanted and we just started building a team and we, and, and it, we're a small team. We're like six of us, maybe what? like maybe six For to eight real? girls. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's only like six to eight of us wow. and, and one guy, I can't forget Ronnie. He's incredible, but uh, you know, and, and, and we broke it down. We were like, all right, we want to help where we can get education, but we could also get, you know, um, you know, we can dive into beauty and fashion and make something, something that girls would want to go, right? And our target was young women, you know, that age where you're in high school, you know, trying to go to college, not sure what you want to do. And, you know, people come up to me all the time asking me for advice. I'm like, this is perfect because we'll have incredible women from all walks of life that look like us, you know, sharing their stories and, and, and career advice and, and, and this is where young girls can go and listen to them talk and, and ask whatever the hell they want. You know what I mean? So we created Envision Fest the first year and it was, you know, we had all day panels and, and we're talking about body positivity to, I curated a media panel where I pulled all these women. Uh, and it was very important to me to have um, all different kinds of representation. You know, I had, you know, my homegirl Gia Peppers, who's done incredible work with BET, VH1. I had Nadeska from Complex at the time. I pulled my girl Alexa, who's a woman in sports. Um, I pulled um, my girlfriend Jen from Brooklyn. You know, she's a Vietnamese woman who's, yes. who's kicking ass. And so I just wanted to have um, someone from all walks of life, my, you know. And the following year, I pulled in Honey German that I've known for years, you know. I wanted to have another Latina. So you just mix it up, you know? Right. And, and it was so successful. And I got so many messages from young girls that were like, it was, you know, such an inc incredible time. 
And we, when I tell you we had like, maybe a, a total of like eight panels, we had workshops. Like I had a workshop on how to protect yourself on the internet. You know, these kids use phones right now, but they don't understand also how to take care of themselves, you know? Little girls are quick to post these crazy photos online and they don't understand that it doesn't belong to them and how quickly it can change their lives and these photos will be around forever to haunt you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and just a simple way to keep it real with, 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 with our youth. And uh, Instagram came in and did their own workshop too. And then next thing you know, we were working with big brands like Champ Sports who, who, who have been an incredible partnership with us. Um, everyone from like Clinique, you know, who did a whole skin skincare reg uh, uh, station, and and to me, it was very in, important to uphold small independent brands, right? Because yes. how can I put somebody who has a, a small online store to compete with a giant like Clinique? But I was like, I want them on the same platform, and so we gave them booths, you know, like the girls who couldn't afford it. We picked a few and I was like, okay, this girl, this girl, this girl, this girl. I was like, I know you can't afford to, you know, purchase a booth. I was like, so we're going to give it to you. So it was beautiful to see businesses come to all these young entrepreneurs, you know, wow. and to see them in, in a light where they were respected because they were there with all the big brands like French Connection, you know what I mean? Like the Levi's, like everyone else. So it was, it was beautiful, man. It was really dope. It's a very emotional time for me because I get, I get so, I'm so proud of all the work. And then besides all of the workshops, the panels, the stores, uh, we had um, um, health and fitness, we covered fashion, and then I also curated the concert. I hired all female DJs to play all day, and then and the concert was focused on like up-and-coming female artists. So it was just, it, 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 it was beautiful. I teamed up with the Lower East Head Girls Club too, because uh, I have done some workshops for the girls, you know, uh, radio workshops. And then I had like uh, two DJs from them open up, you know, and it was their first time actually like having the real gig. That's and it was so cute cool. to see them, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, being on stage for the first time. And it, 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 and we've had so many people who have came through and like supported us, you know? And initially to me, it's for women of color to just be uplifted because we don't see that enough. We, there's no, there's no, I, I couldn't think of a place that wasn't, like there's the beauty cons, yes, but that's focused on beauty. You know what I mean? Yes. Like I want more education. I want yes. more challenging <laughs> conversations about career and life. And 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 this was intimate. And I sponsored over 300 girls from inner city youth. Um, some of your girls, you know what I yep. mean? And 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 we just keep it going. And because of COVID this year, we couldn't have the actual festival. So we've been having a lot of like uh, online workshops and conversations, which I love. But but even, even at, the, at the festival, we had um, Champ Sports, which, like I said, has been a huge supportive of us. They, they actually gave us uh, scholarships for young women who had businesses. And we were able to oh give this young woman who opened up her own spinning studio called Spike Spin in Brooklyn. And we were able to give her $5,000 towards her business. And, and oh. that's all because of Champs. And, now we're pushing, now we want more of that. You know, we want more companies to, to give us some money to help our communities of young women. Because girl, we already know how much money it takes to open up your own business. That's right. And you know, anything we can support them with financially, that's upliftment within itself, you know? So and yeah, Envision Fest has been my passion project. It makes me so happy and it's so fun. And I work with a group of uh, super smart, super sharp young women. And it's the time where I can bring so much talent together, you know, and, and, and to just uplift uh, the youth. And to me, it's like after being in, the, in, in, in radio for so long and having a voice, I just kind of feel like it's my duty, you know what I mean, to be able to use um, all of my access to help in whatever way I can. Oh, my God. And that's exactly what being there as somebody who's enjoying it and getting from the experience is exactly yeah. what it is. I was like, this is a wonderland, you know, for young girls, even for myself, it was yeah. on every level. And I feel like um, this, there's that whole concept that you said about being relatable and knowing that girls can see someone like BK Jen, who's Vietnamese, you know what I'm saying? Who, again, we come to that immigrant topic where you come from another country you come to the city of dreams you come to the you know the country of dreams and you want to see like you you have these visions and you have these hopes and dreams and then you see somebody like you and jenny you're like this is possible this is attainable and things like and festivals like this is what's opening up 
their minds. Because we don't have that. Yeah. I, mean, like, I have these kids who come to the same school every day, right? Who live around the corner from the school. And this is all they're doing. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. There was three girls who had took, taken the train for the first time going to the Envision Fest. It's right. crazy. I had I had girls who, who came up to me too, and it was like, "We've never been to a concert before. Oh, we've never been to a festival. We've never been to anything like this. Nothing." All like right, that. I'm in the corner, like. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But that's why it's important, you know. It's important to continue to push, you know, and that's why we we push so hard to make it, you know, to make it happen each year. Like I said, we're a really small team, and we're still, you know, trying to make ends meet and and and, and make it happen and. Listen, the first year we had so many people who were like, no, but for all the people who said yes and, and, and we showed it and we proved, those people came back and wanted to work even more with us. And after people saw what we did, they were like, okay, now we want to get involved, you know? So little by little, it was also a humbling process for me. I was like, what do you mean no? You don't want to help the children? Like, you don't want to empower Wow, this people. is what you mean about? Brown girls, like why would you want to do it? You know, we I, I had a lot of companies that said no to me and I was in shock because I couldn't believe it, you know, but you just learn from it. And then you find out that there's so many people who also are willing to take chances, you know? And later on, I'm sure those companies will come back and that's a yeah, learning yeah. experience for those companies, right, you know, right, to right, see right. They what you, and if they yeah. don't, hey, somebody else will, you know? Yep. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So for the love of it and staying in your light, cause you were very, consistent about that in this interview you remind you did you said a hundred times you have first of all if you're not consistent basically consistency is key yeah learning what it is that you have so now how do you stay in in that light how do you stay in good spirits how do you stay in the love of it oh there's days just like everyone else that I get frustrated you know with yeah with a bunch of things but if this is what I want to do, I know that I have to make sure that I continue to just push, you know what I mean? And I think one of the, the key elements too is staying relevant. I remember DJ Enough, when I first started um, really like like blowing, he was like, he came up to me and he was like, oh, you're hot, congratulations, you're hot. But that's not the hardest part. He's like, staying hot is gonna be your hardest part. So I, I wanna see, he's like, I wanna see what happens next. And I was like, Oh, you know, <laughs> okay, you know, but it, it, it like burned into my soul. So it's like, I constantly was like, always, what's the next project? What's the next thing? You know what I mean? And that's how it should be for everyone. Like, what is going to be your next step? What is it that you want to do? And I'm so blessed to be able to be part of a morning show that's multicultural. And they let, they basically, we talk about whatever the hell we want. Like, we're not a scripted show. We're not pressed by higher ups to like oh you can't get too political you can't get too you know personal like we're extremely open like I work every day I wake up in the morning and I basically chat with my friends and I debate with my friends and I have real feelings and we sometimes fight and we make up and we agree and we disagree but because of that I'm thankful for the opportunity to continue and you always have to make sure that you continue educating yourself on what's next uh, what's current, you always got to sharpen your tools, you know? Like I told you, think about all the people who came and went, you know what I mean? Right. There's a reason because of that. And listen, there's nothing wrong with changing your mind and being like, all right, well, I did this for this long, now I want to try something else. By all means, that's going to be me too, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, now that I have this festival, like, like I remember telling myself, like, after I'm done with my show, like, I, I will be able to be happy and being like, I'm done, I'm going to focus on this you know, and, and, and see what's next and my future family, and my future travels. Cause that's another thing I love to travel. Oh my but God. It, yes. It's really hard for me sometimes like with my show. So it's, it's, it can be a little tough, but you know, to your point for the love of it, you got to love what you do. You got to love it and fight for it and, and continue to make yourself like present in the moment. So you can, you know, like stay and be successful. And your love for art too. I had that as another question and I didn't bring it up, but you <laughs> are so art. Yeah. From your nails to your sneakers to your, I love all of that. And I feel, you know, those are little things that I feel I see in you that you take to what you love as a person. Yeah. And yeah. you mix that with your business too. And that's something that drives you and motivates you and keeps pushing you. And it's such a beautiful thing to see. I think also now too, people shouldn't be afraid to be themselves, you know, 
because I, I would have people tell me you should be a little bit more sexy. Oh my you're God, always wearing yes. sneakers. You should dress up more. You're always doing this. And it's like, you know, it's like I never fell into what everyone else told me to do. I, you know, if I want to dress up, I'll do it because I want to, you know, because I'm going somewhere. <laughs> and I love sneakers, so I have a ton and I, I because I enjoy them. I, I don't do things. I've never done things because it's a trend or it's hot. Like, I like it. I'll do it. If, if I'm not into it, I'm just not going to be partial to it. Oh my God. But just because, you know, I I'll always think of it like this. There's space for everybody. And, you know, your interest can spark somebody else's interest. And that will give them a reason to be curious about you and want to know about you and follow your journey, you know, and, and, and come to your events and support you and, and build genuine relationships, you know? I've had girls that have been coming to my events forever that when they see them, I always give them a hug because it's like, I don't know them personally, but I know them, you know what I mean? Because they've been supporting for such a long time and, and, and it truly makes me happy. And that's so important. I felt like yeah. that with you too. I would see you at places and you would be like, hi, and I'm like, yeah. she, does she remember me or does she? And it's that, it's that feeling, it's that, it's like, I remember yeah. seeing you here. I know you support me and I'm watching you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's such a good feeling. I thank you, Laura. Thank of you for course. all you're doing. And I'm so happy I was able to, to work with you and, and, and give yes. you an amazing prom basket. Yes, we didn't even talk about that. Ah, okay, wait, 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 wait. We gotta get back <laughs> really quickly, really quickly. Oh my God, I'm all into you and I didn't even talk about I mean, okay, so that Promise Project thing, I started out six years ago. Again, it's something that I do in my community. I figured, I was sitting with my homegirls one day and I said, you know how many dresses I buy? Like, I spend money on a $300 dress for a wedding. Mm -hmm. And then I don't look back at it. And I'm like, I wonder how many girls out there are like me. So I started reaching out to a few of my friends and my homegirls like, I have five for you. My other homegirl was like, I have 10 for you. My other... The first time I did the Promise Project, the collection of dresses, Laura, in, a, in two months, I collected 150 amazing, good quality dresses. I was like, right, right, right. the outpour of it was, so I told myself, I said, so the way we get free dresses, I'm sure there's makeup artists who do so many makeup, do so many girls' faces that they don't mind doing one face for free, right. you know, especially for a great cause. Boom, I started reaching out like that. Then I started getting little girls who were hand, um, giving hand-me-downs with shoes and they were in perfect condition. Again, I didn't want this to seem, it's definitely charity, but I didn't, I feel like it's an opportunity because I feel like we're not open. As women, we feel we need a new dress to look, why? If, how many times am I, you know, growing up with my aunts were like my sisters, I would borrow my aunts, you know, I would die to wear my aunt's um, Tommy jacket, which she would let me wear once and never again. So they knew it wasn't mine. I never came back to school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that idea of, you know, feeling like you have to buy something new or, or I spent $2,000 on a dress, so I'm going to be prom queen. I, I wanted to break those, you know, those barriers down to that whole mentality of we can support each other. We can lend each other clothes. We can and be great and still feel good. And so I took that concept and over the six years I've had from hair beauticians, I had for three years straight, I had beauticians who closed down their spots. And we had over 15 girls in the spots just doing hair and makeup. And oh my God, the, the experience has been like, I mean, unforgettable, truly, truly unforgettable. And again, like you said, this is something I did for me. It yeah, wasn't yeah, something yeah, yeah. that I was doing to promote, was it? No, I was doing this within my community. My right. mother died when I was a little girl. I grew up with the community. My grandmother was always there. I had my aunts always there. But at the same time, it was the salsa classes. It was the Girl Scouts. It was all of that that really molded me. You know, and I'm like, where do we have that now? Where do we have those women who are saying, you know, I got you too. You know, I want to be that in the community. They, mm -hmm. The community did that for me. I want to get, this is my turn to give back, you know? Right, right, right. So this I year, even, I, I don't even remember how we started talking about that. You know, what's so weird is that that day you were calling me for something and I swore that I had DM'd you because that morning that was my focus to reach right, out right, to right. you and to see right. if maybe, you know, with this envision and all the stuff you're doing, I'm like, maybe she would love to, you know, help me. Maybe she could, right. you know? 
that that same day, the way God works, the way energy works, girl, <laughs> you called me. So I'm look, I'm tutoring, and I'm like, oh my god, I think I was asking you about like, what do kids need right now? Yeah, it was what so they, weird. What does Laura need? I was like, oh my yes, god, and I was like, I'm you. actually reaching. I, <laughs> I swore that I had DM'd you. It was so weird. And you t- instead, you had texted me back. Right, I was right, like, right. I didn't even get to DM her yet. What the? Right. So anyway, I reached out to you, and you were all for it. And Laura, I mean, we came up with the idea that this year, since I couldn't do the prom thing, I mean, how heartbreaking it is that these girls couldn't. Do you, like, yeah, going, fresh, going into fresh me, I already knew what prom dress I want the senior year. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, These things, yeah, you know? So to get hit with COVID and to not be able to go through prom and all these things that happen. I have a little sister as well right now. She went through this. She's 18 years old. She was all ready. We, were, we had dates set to go, like all the aunts, all the cousins to go shopping for dresses. Like a whole, yeah. a whole shebang. A whole experience for a lot of yes. people. So, so I just thought your, your prom basket idea was brilliant. I was like, that's perfect. We can get something done. I was like, I remember, like why don't you ask to these, these girls, something to these girls. And you were like, no, but you, you said such a good point that I truly felt. Cause I've, I've heard people tell me this before. Just ask, right. you know, what's so hard about asking? That's a lot of times I do it on my own. Cause I feel like, yeah. But yeah, I told them, what's the worst I can say? No, I can't. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're like, what's the worst I could have told you? No, I can't. And I was like, and he, but hearing it from you being you know knowing all you've done you know i i'm gonna be real with you i hold you at a as a, at a standard so speaking to you at that standard and saying you know oh my god she was so open just to the idea she was she loved the idea and yeah. then you know what i'm saying she oh my god so from garnier you got me garnier you got me l'oreal you got me fancy yeah. on top of that you sent me the cutest journals yeah. and and those journals, I remember going, I was like, I'm going to buy some journals. That would be something cute that we can do. And Girl, they were so cute. They were like wrapped in leather. They had a little thing to tie them with. I was like, oh, this is fancy. <laughs> I just thought it, you know, I just thought it was such a, a special token for everyone who's missing such an important moment in their lives. And yes. I just, you know, I commend you for taking time to put it together. And, and, you know, when I saw pictures of all the girls who received their baskets and everyone was so happy, it's just, it's, it's nice. You know, it's touching. And like I said, right, it's our duty to give back. Yes. Because we've been we've been there before and we remember all the amazing women yep. who, who went out of their way to help us when we were younger and for not everybody has family, right? So I appreciate that a lot. Like I had so many beautiful women who've helped me in my career that didn't have to and they weren't related to me, you know. It wasn't like I wasn't blessed to be able to be around aunts and cousins, you know. But I always remember the way they made me feel, you know. So it's important that we create those opportunities now. And because, you know, we we're not we're not we're blessed to be able to provide for ourselves that's and, right. and and that's why it's important that you know that we connect and, and make it happen for other people so kudos to you man it, it made me so happy oh man no thank you thank you thank you, <laughs> you completed the dream for me i was like i went to sleep that night like laura's really like she said yes to this like there's so many times people have told me reach out to sephora or reach out you're doing such a great thing you never yeah. know you know and i'm just like i don't know it's well, okay always I, uh, anything listen there's so many times where I just, just I was like just shoot your shot <laughs> what's the worst they can say no and out of a out of a sea of no you'll get like one two three yeses and you'll be so surprised you know well I want to say you were our connection you were the first time I actually shot my shot yeah, out of the six to. years that I've been doing this girl this is the first to. time and I thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay! Yes, thank of course, you. we did it together, so. It was so awesome, so yeah, awesome. I just look forward for you to bring your girls again to Envision Fest when we have the next year. Oh my God, they're going to be so sad it's not happening this year. It's okay, we'll be back. But I'm going to get them logged in and all that. I'm going to get um get them how they can get, you know, the workshops that are going yeah, on. Yeah, 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 we offer the, the, the workshops. So follow us at Envision Fest, E-N-V-S-N. F-E-S-T on Instagram. We're constantly promoting everything that we're doing. You can go to envisionfestival.com, but, you know, or all, I'm always pushing it or promoting anything that we're doing. So it's just, just yep. follow us. And a lot of our workshops are free. You know, the majority are like donation based. So it's, if uh-huh. you have it, you can, if you don't, it's okay. Like I said, some of us are blessed to be able to do it. And some of us are, are uh, in a position where we can provide these free services. The majority of our stuff is free. So if you guys get a chance, just log in. We always have great programming. 
I love all you do, girl. Thank Keep you. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank all right. You. Bye, Mama. Bye, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs>